everyone. This is our 100th public meeting. <laughs> I'm public meeting. Um, today we want to talk about the incorporating, where Nico already has his E residency and want to push things forward um, beginning next week. Um, and also about a suggestion of who who had the suggestion yari keith keith I'm, i met with keith uh okay. last week and yeah he made a really compelling case on uh, trying to build kind of like a consortium or a corporation type of uh, structure under nx well not, not so much under nx than uh, besides nx um to to be able to better uh, provide a more efficient structure and more more a, a, a better revenue through uh, partnerships and st such things so then we would have as the, the next company would have more control over the supply chain essentially so um, how how we would envision it going about it would be per, first start with some partnerships maybe and then once the business model starts to take off and we start to have revenue we could start acquiring these uh, partner companies, the small companies, and merging them into this, like uh, they will become part of the NX network. And then the idea would be, in my opinion, like the decentralization. So each of those companies should be able to stand on their own. So if NX um, wouldn't be there, those companies would still be in business, right? So those companies would have their own like uh, management. They would be, uh, completely standalone, but they would uh, exclusively work for NX to, build, to put up those projects, at least uh, in the beginning. And then of course, in the future, if there's more demand, they, there's no, of course they can, they can expand, they can grow on, on their own. And this way, the project could evolve and uh, live by the demand more, and then also take a little bit more pressure out of uh, the founding team, because then the, the kind of like the whole NX network would essentially will operate by itself and, and that that could also mean that later there will be like these more uh, man local management teams such as like we we would be the first one that will be incorporated in in estonia and then there could be like one in uh, american markets one for african markets and 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 so on and these would uh, cooperate and then form together this consortium uh, nx consortium or or something like that and each of those uh, companies and each of those sub companies or parallel companies would all be able to they would all have sound business models of their own and then just work together to realize the grand vision uh, what do you guys think um so did i got you right the um the small annex companies in the local countries would um do what would do retrofitting for example or would be providers of um, TV panels or something like this or are there um, sorry okay or are there um, also annex but like the local office where you can go and say and um, I have a project or something like this what would I, I yeah, essentially yes, but they, they wouldn't need to be called NX or any in, in by name because uh, let's say that the, something happens to the NX and or there's a competitor and it goes out of business well, and, and, and then we want to, for each and every, we don't want every one of these businesses to fail, of course. And uh, well, the benefit of this kind of a model would be, of course, that uh, anybody who has interest could then uh, take a more active part in one of these smaller companies as well, let's say that some of us have like, for example, m myself, I have a construction engineer background. So I, I could provide a lot of value on the like ground team and actually supervising those uh, construction projects and such things. So I might be, might have interest in uh, holding stake in those smaller companies that actually do the contracting because I have a lot of expertise to give uh, something like this. So that would uh, lend us flexibility in terms of our personal funding models as well. And, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm seeing, yeah. Nico, I'm seeing some strengths and I'm seeing some weaknesses uh, because like we are talking about NX more of like a hub of 
like-minded uh, investments that collectively work towards a common goal. Uh, but okay, that's something like a plat, like an Uber. Okay, uh, there's a strength if we have a clear pipeline. Now, um, flipping the coin from the perspective of the pipeline, then the problems because uh, we need to clearly define the role uh, where everybody falls into. If we are building a franchise, then yeah, it can be done. But the more simple the pipeline is, uh, the more likely it's going to be a success. And uh, more clearly, the investor understands the, the product, where the money goes and how they are going to earn, uh, the more likely it is that it will actually attract a larger audience. So if we are talking about building a project, like you're a construction engineer, if we are talking about building projects and, for example, leasing out panels or selling a service that spans over a number of years uh, to developers or to customers themselves, then uh, we need to have a clear uh, production and then we need to define the investor clearly what they're going to get and how they're going to get it. If we build a network, actually, I'm a little bit against of having control over um, the companies involved because that will create a lot of bias. But definitely, if we are building a network, then we can we can have some of our own projects there. Um, but I I rather not micromanage too much. Yeah, so yeah, with, I, as with every, as with any other uh, decision, it's always make or buy. And it, it is definitely interesting to, to do a lot of stuff in the supply chain ourselves um, because it might be cheaper uh, depending on the economies of scale. Um, but I agree, uh, it's, it also will decrease decentralization and, and increase, um, well, fault uh, possibility uh, if, if we do a lot of that stuff our own by ourselves. And then the question is, should we really connect the companies in the supply chain via equity so that, uh, so that either the companies are uh, interconnect themselves or that we as individuals are interconnected in those companies? Or should we just say we work on freelance basis and for each project, which is uh, by the service of the other companies? Of course, we can support those companies and we can be part of those companies. But how far would you go, Nico, to, to link the companies and in the different production stages? Great points, great questions. And uh, yeah, I don't want it to be centralized either. I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want to be in charge of everything because it's too much, uh, uh, it's a single, it creates a single point of failure and then the whole system can collapse. Essentially, like we could start with what we, what we've been talking about just contracting first because that's the easiest and lightest way to get up get up and running once we have some revenue and once we we uh we have a proven and working model then we could um think about expanding and and having these side projects which are separate from nx like let's say that we have a, a really good company that is doing uh subcontracting for us then um Maybe they are looking to sell. Maybe one of uh, one of us wants to wants to take over that company and, and make it their own. Who knows? Like whatever. One, maybe one of us wants to step away from NX. Or at least there should be this kind of an option, and we should talk about that because uh, uh, not not only like uh, in terms of uh, we could get more revenue by by uh, making the supply chain more efficient, and also like making our own partnerships through like we could we could have like a section in China that only procures uh, panels, for example, and that necessarily that company doesn't have to have anything to do with NX, except it will be the main supplier of, uh, of all NX projects at some point. So, hello everyone. Doesn't, that doesn't really, hello. 
Hello, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. I'm I'm looking for a chance to introduce myself. Oh, sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't see you there. Go ahead. No, no, she's this is Naveen here, and I was speaking to Max earlier. So I thought of you know being a part of your uh, team and see how I can collaborate with you and uh, being a good uh, team member and uh, work for the the success for of the ICO. Great. Welcome, Naveen. It's good to have you here. Yeah. So, uh, shall I give you a little bit uh, information and the background about myself? Then we can discuss uh, further about that. Please do. Okay. Uh, total, I have more than 12 years of experience in banking, financial, and IT sector. And uh, for the initial uh, four years of my career, I was working with Oracle Corporation. And uh, after that, uh, I have joined a bank in uh, UAE. So I am here from last uh, uh, eight years. Uh, I have joined a project management team. So my main task uh, are to create the project plan, creating the budgeting, uh, doing the scheduling, and making sure by the end of the day, uh, the project uh, is executing and delivered according to the project management plan. And we can uh, I used to take different kind of techniques, whether it's uh, agile or it's a waterfall. And I have been associated with one of the the bigger biggest project which uh, my bank had taken, where I was responsible for uh, integrating more than 150 application uh, with the core banking uh, application uh, with the core banking software. So these are the things which I do as part of my full time job. And uh, last year I have come across this Bitcoin or the blockchain, uh, the buzzword in the industry. So because I'm also from the IT industry, so I thought of making my career. And creating another pillar uh, in my profile so i started learning about bitcoin blockchain consensus protocol what all those things and how we can implement those things i started doing trading and got interest into that so slowly slowly i have uh, started participating in the icos so till today uh, i have been participated in more than 30 icos so and uh, as part of uh, ICO and blockchain consultancy, so I do, uh, I provide so many services. So as part of blockchain consultancy, so uh, uh, I uh, align all the the functionalities which we can uh, on the blockchain uh, uh, on the blockchain technologies and how we can integrate all the products and uh, or the uh, all the uh, all the functionalities on the blockchain creating the technical ecosystem for the uh, for the product and what are the new things and uh, uh, and the consensus protocols are happening in the market and how we can exploit the uh, the how we can ex exploit the opportunity of gaining those things and uh, using those uh, things in our product moreover i also provide the weekly news uh, newsletter which helps my clients to uh, uh, to understand what are what is happening in the uh, in the in the crypto world what are the regula regulations uh, what are the compli com com uh, compliance things are happening in the world and how we can take the corrective or necessary action so that we should not have any problem in future and as part of ico advisory uh, i do token distribution analysis white paper analysis uh, uh, and uh, do and also the data analysis to make sure so we are pitching at the right uh, side of the globe and uh, so that we can attract the customers uh, moreover i am also part of uh, one of the development company which is based in india and a marketing company which helps to uh, attract the customers and do the mass marketing and uh, uh, and putting the the news articles on the forbes wall street journals etc so and they have the track record of uh, Hitting the hard cap even before uh, starting the ICO to the public. So these are this is the you know I, I might have taken a lot of time, but this is what I do as part of my blockchain and ICO advisory things. All right, that sounds good. And uh, how how did you get interested in NX? Uh, I will tell you because I have been associated with one of the project uh, which is Solara.io. If somebody might have heard of it. So this is uh, this is also related to energy sector. So they are doing the tokenization and uh, creating the solar energy and putting everything on the blockchain. So somehow I have been introduced to NX dot solar from that group, and then I contacted uh, Max and see how we can because I also been 
participated in that uh, in, in that project so i'm sure my knowledge will help you out here also because that ico is uh, that ico is in uh, pre sale right now uh, i mean private pre sale uh, right now so so that was the uh, the reason i got interested into this because i have been working in the similar kind of project earlier okay cool good to have you here um you seem, yes. seem to have a lot of ex experience in ICOs, uh, which we, i'm sure everybody appreciates here since this i believe is the first ico for everybody else yeah yeah it's, it's totally fine so for 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 me also one uh, once uh, uh, once in a like in the last year uh, so always it's a first time for everyone yeah i agree Good and welcome. Yeah, we have a great team here. Everybody's here from their free will, and uh, everybody wants to make the project best possible. Yeah, yeah. I'm here in UAE right like now. I'm here in Dubai right now. Oh, you're in Dubai? Yeah. So it's right now. It's 10:30 uh, in the night. So I just got one message from Max. So if you wanted to introduce, I said I was about to sleep. I wake up and I said, "Okay, let's uh, have a chat." Cool, cool. Glad that you can make it. Yeah, welcome to join any, any of our meetings. Yes, so nice to have you here. Thank you very yeah. much. So do do you know already everybody else here or did you just talk to Max? No, I only know about Max, no one else. So I, I believe okay. there are four five <laughs> there are so many people, I think around eight people in the group. Yeah, there's there's a lot. Uh, we we have like maybe around ten ten ish uh, like active members, and I think the founding team is gonna be about the same. And I don't think uh, at this uh, like it's uh, the hour is late. We're probably not gonna do a full introduction round here. But yeah, uh, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Follow. Even the name is more than enough for me. Right. <laughs> but we have pretty much the all all the like core members here who are uh, like we have the developers, we have the the banking sector, we have founders. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I think this is the team and uh, full house. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> full house. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically, what I, what I just wanted to talk about today was the idea of kind of like thinking like, okay, I just don't want us to leave any like money on the table. Mm -hmm. To be frank, and also I I want to have as uh, streamlined and efficient a uh, supply chain as possible. Mm -hmm. And however we get there, it uh, doesn't really matter, but uh, we should uh, consider all, all different options. And I think Keith make a, made a really uh, interesting point about uh, those uh, like sub or like parallel companies rather to NX that could, could be operate by themselves all together. So that okay. would kind of like uh, multiply our business, business model. Mm -hmm. And essentially the idea would still be the same that NX Solar would remain this like a decentralized kind of like a hub that only would do okay. the management of the platform and pr procure these plants and then distribute the shares of uh, those plants for the token holders. So those would be okay. like uh, security tokens. Mm. So, so, okay. So, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. So is it like the company will be based out of USA? Because you, I heard the security token. So are you going to register this in uh, with SEC? Is it, um, well, I mean, <laughs> ideally, yes, but... Uh, Realistically, probably not a, not a, going to happen anytime soon. Probably we have to exclude uh, U.S. In investors, like most security tokens. Uh -huh. But I, I think that's a, that's probably a non-issue because there's there's no way we can control the secondary market. And if uh, if somebody from the U.S. wants to buy in, there's absolutely nothing we can do to stop that. But uh, of course, at the initial uh, initial round is something to discuss uh, how we're going to distribute a private company's equity. Um, kind of publicly or do we have to go public that's something that i don't have a whole lot of experience in and and i was wondering if you guys have any insight on that yeah so i i do have some at least a theoretical experience in in uh, taking a company public and it is at least in the incumbent market a big pain in the ass and a lot of stuff to take care of uh, which is understandable because you are taking in other people's money and this means that you have to be responsible and this is absolutely uh, understandable uh, however then on the other hand we have this modular approach that we finance each project separately and this is interesting because now we have the chance to to build several project teams that can be completely different specifically for each uh, sector or country. 
Um, so let's say we make one project in Germany, um, then, uh, you know, uh, for example, I can, uh, I can start handling the, uh, you know, boots on the ground uh, construction, um, uh, or uh, at least get, uh, you know, uh, support the real people that, that know the technical stuff, because I'm not the technical guy. Uh, and then on the other hand, if we have a, a project in Kenya, for example, then we could have Don as a local representative um, taking or managing this specific uh, uh, project uh, on its own. So, Nico, I, I think it's interesting that we uh, link the supply chain, but actually our supply chain is not that long because we only need to buy the uh, power plant, uh, the uh, panels, which is easy, and then we have to build it and operate it. Um, building it uh, and that, maintain it also. Yes, operate, operations and maintenance, yes. Um, building it, there we need boots on the ground, and that should be a local construction company. Uh, and because mo in most countries, to actually build photovoltaic power plants, you need to have a registered company in that specific uh, country. Uh, and we most, li or most likely, we will have to partner up with, with companies there, uh, and one of us will handle the uh, project management. And then operating and, and maintaining, again, is uh, quite an easy task, or, or uh, not an easy task, but not that time consuming. You might have to check in with the panels once every year or so uh, to clean and to, to do the maintenance. And again, here, I think we can work project specifically with either local representatives that we get due to the decentralized and open source aspect of Annex, or, you know, paid for freelancers uh, on the open market. Okay, so I have one small question over here. So that uh, the tokens which will be generating, will it be like the, uh, will it be a solar kind of tokens, the energy which will be producing out of the, uh, the solar panel, are we going to tokenize uh, those tokens also? Uh, that is that was one of our early thoughts on, on how we can handle that uh, so the for example a kilowatt hour produced is represented in the token that is being issued really interesting and really complex and I do not think that it is that necessary uh, why do we need a token to to manage how much energy is being produced we can we have mm -hmm. high quality software that does that for us yes it's mm -hmm. not one hundred percent trustless uh, but so would be a token. Um, uh, okay. because it's, it's always hard to get uh, real-world data into the blockchain, and there's always a trust issue at that single point of failure. So I think that we do not need to have a token that is that linked to the energy production. However, okay. the token, as, as, of, as of today, and again, this, is, this might be subject to change uh, with further improvements, but as of today, it is on, only a, a security token that represents the share in this entire portfolio of companies and okay. it gives voting rights and and dividend rights um, okay so nothing but, else so uh, so what about the le le let's say now the meter readings will be there and how those will be calculated will it be a smart reading will it be on the blockchain so are, are we going to so uh, the energy which will be produced by the solar panel so how are we going to give the you know the the rewards mm -hmm. to the people who are p producing the energy and giving it to the uh, to the centralized hub. So how are we going to manage that thing? So for for metering, we will definitely use smart meters and they will be uh, providing a live feed of the production. However, again, we don't really need a blockchain for that because we don't need the trustless part and the, the censorship mm -hmm. resistance part for that. Uh, and we could, for example, open or, or put on our website detailed uh, description of how much uh, is produced and if there is any issue at all. Or we could keep that data uh, private uh, to you know, uh, secure anonymity for our customers. Um, something that we would need uh, to look further into in the future. However, both approaches are easily possible and are working today with no issues. And then, how will how will the uh, uh, how will the community or the token holders be uh, rewarded? So, first of all, who are the token holders? We want to give first. The first tokens to the community itself that will need the uh, the solar plant, and the community can finance as much of the required capital as they can. So let's say we have a required capital of one million euros, they can finance up to six hundred thousand euros, 
Um, so this means that they get 60% of all the issued tokens. The additional 400,000 euros that are still needed, those will be um, acquired on the, uh, in a public token sale. And this means that the uh, international public investors will have 40% um, free float of this, of this token. The more money the community finances in advance, uh, the less or, or the uh, the less is the monthly electricity bill. So if the if the community would finance one hundred percent in advance, they would of course not have to pay back any amount because it's already there uh, because it's already their uh, product. However, if they only finance ten percent of this investment, then they need to repay the ninety percent investors. And this will be done with a weekly or daily or monthly electricity bill and that, uh, that then goes directly to the token investors um, through the dividends. And just, you know, as a quick aside, we will only use Bitcoin as, and other cryptocurrencies as, as currencies, and we will not use any fiat incumbent banking. Okay. And see, uh, one last question. After that, I will not ask any questions. Uh, <laughs> no, see no, the... no, please go ahead. Okay, so now what are we so say from the the uh, the thing which you have told me? Where are we going to implement? Where are we going to use our tokens on the blockchain? Uh, where are we going to use the functionalities of blockchain on this? Good question, Ed. and we that is one point that we would like to discuss here today as well, because so far uh, Ethereum is of course one blockchain that is suitable. However, we have many other blockchains as well. Bitcoin is again uh, with, with counterparty no, no, protocol. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Max. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt sorry. you. My question was not to which blockchain we need to use. My question was how the product will use the blockchain. Like say now the solar, the Emacs solar. So how the blockchain will be used in the product? Because as you said, smart meet, smart meters will not be used. So the energy which will be produced will not be used, will not use the blockchain. So is it only for the payment or for the transaction? Are we going to use the blockchain or do we have any other, uh, uh, you know, the things or the functionalities for using the blockchain? And so the, the main, of course. Yeah, uh, um, there was an original plan that I wanted to add about uh, smart meters. Uh, that would be connected straight to the inverter uh, or each power pro producing unit uh, installed uh, in the customer location uh, would have uh, a smart meter and also a controlling unit which would be able to turn the power plants into a decentralized smart grid or nodes in a smart grid. But we actually decided to scrap that and focus on the investment side at first and okay. in this smart contract uh, the panels would only be dumb units uh, which would attract uh, basically rental income or something like that depending on what this what uh, the team uh, has uh, been thinking, but uh, in the beginning, in the phase one, the power plants themselves, they do absolutely nothing. Uh, and uh, phase two, we make them do something like in the real world in, and with uh, an IoT device and you think about that later. Okay. Okay, I got your point. Yes, and so the the main use case for the blockchain specifically is the registry of the of the shareholders of the equity shareholders. But the token itself can also be used for in a process that we call sparkling up, as sparking up and fizzling down. So if you if you use your liquid tokens that you can trade and and exchange at any time, if you stake them in a in a time locked contract for a, a period of time, you increase the voting rights that you get. To vote on future projects and to vote on on um, uh, team decisions, for example. However, this token can also be used by the consumers of the electricity to pay their electricity bill. 
So this means if the consumer has already invested in the token sale initially, and they now own a couple NX tokens, they can now use this invested money to pay back uh, for the electricity. However, okay. if, if, you, if you use those tokens to pay back, you of course lose your voting rights and your dividend share. Okay, okay, I got it, I, I, I got it, I got it. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, but uh, but then to the next point, Nico, you you would uh, you wanted to talk a bit more about the Raven platform. Uh, as, as... Yeah, I'm. I've been lately, like the past week, I've been pretty consumed with the with the idea of that. I, it really speaks to me, like the si similar way to Bitcoin does, because it's kind of like a platform that just a protocol that simply exists, and it seems like it would have all the functionality we're looking for: dividends, voting rights and it's a security token platform and another one similar is the polymath and which both i've been uh, looking into the last past week and i i was i wanted to get your guys opinion if you had the time to check on check in on that and what do you guys think uh, if those could be viable options for us so uh, to be clear the the, the raven uh, Raven coin, I, I think, is it called Raven coin? As far as yeah, I it's know, called Raven coin. Yeah, it's as by Bruce ben, Fenton. Is is there? And uh, I think uh, I respect that guy. And I, I think uh, it's it's a nice. Uh, it's been mined for like seven months around. Uh, they didn't do a token sale, which is always impressive to me. They just started uh, building a product that is helpful people so and they don't try to get listed on any exchanges it's only traded over over um uh crypto crypto bridge decentralized exchange i believe anyway for me for me that's appealing and uh yeah technically uh, technology wise i have no idea how suitable it would be so i would really uh, like at least uh especially alex's and Tom opinions on this I know Tom was talking what? about at least polymath earlier. Talking about polymath, it should be uh, compliant with the European Union regulations. But it's as far as I know, it should be based based in the UK. So um, polymath is a compliant securities token framework suited for a particular jurisdiction but it should be compliant with the EU as far as it can be assumed but you know you need to ask about that regarding Ravencoin um, yeah I mean uh, but it's still a new token I mean it's great for experiments um, uh, when it comes to requirements of, of, of having a, a token as a security, that one yet does not really have um, more um, specific technical requirements than can be provided with Ethereum or NEO, for example, or my favorite, VeChain, which I really like, which also is going to provide, by the way, uh, supply chain tools. Power Waterhouse Coopers is supporting it. But um, if we are going to do IoT bridging, then we are, go have, we are going to have to look at IOTA uh, and um, also EOS, which is interesting. Uh, those frameworks that can uh, scale up. That's required for IoT. But for yeah, security, think... it's just compliance, just legal. Right, yeah, that's that's what's applying to, um, appealing to me as as well, that they are the platform is already compliant with some security law, but I wasn't aware that polymath was a, a UK based regulation only. But I don't think like I think it can be tweaked. And but but in terms of MVP, I think we're still talking Ethereum probably here if, if the plan is still to launch this year. And 
it's not out of the question to do a, to a swap of those uh, tokens at some point when technology is ripe. I, I'm not, I have no idea if uh, Ravencoin is even close to being a finished product that we can actually use. Regardless, I think it's uh, useful to open this conversation as soon as possible because uh, as we already can see, there's uh, plenty of uh, possible options in the future and everybody has their own favorite, of course. Uh, so it's uh, important to open that discussion. Yes, agreed. And I, I like those two approaches. So uh, what, what, what programming language do they use? I'm currently looking at the Raven coin, but there isn't much information available about it. Uh, how do you actually create this own token on the platform? Or at least I can't find it yet. Find it yet. Yeah, there's the, the white, white paper. It's not super clear and uh, like I said, it's, it's been around for like seven months or something like that. So far from a far cry from a finished product, but it's kind of like um, they're developing as they go, I guess. It's just, I thought it was, uh, was an interesting project. And also they, they have this, uh, they copied this approach from Bitcoin with the halving and the, uh, the, uh, the, Maximum supply and, and stuff like that. That of course feels so. It is a currency <laughs> as well as. But that yeah, it's, it, it's mined, but it's also. Uh, oh no. Reading the white paper, I think there are good aspects of in this Raven coin, like the voting and stuff like that. So we wouldn't have to write our right. own smart contract. Platform enables it by default. Yeah, and, and one thing is also because I do believe that uh, we are going to the world is going to be tokenized. All all asset class will be tokenized. It's just a matter of time, and that's yeah. why these platforms like Ravencoin and Polymath are popping up right now. And there's a, there are like really talented teams that are working on these tokenizing security problems. And I don't see a reason why we should do that work because somebody else is more passionate about that. We should we should just uh, take advantage of their knowledge and then maybe build on on top of their project because that's what those platforms are for. Yes, I, I think you know Ethereum is a, a really versatile tool, and we do not need that much versatility. We have quite a, a simple token to structure. And if there is a platform like Raven or like um, Polymath that is specifically tailored to be used by equity tokens, then this is really, really interesting. And, and we, we should definitely look further into that. And I think that if, you know, if programming is doable and if we can do everything that we want to do, which is quite simple, um, you know, voting shouldn't be that hard and uh, dividends, if that is possible, uh, you know, it should be really doable. Yeah, I think it might be a good idea that if, if, if everybody could uh, look into it briefly and try to form, form their own opinion and then we can re return to this topic. For now, uh, like I said, it, uh, in terms of MVP, I don't think it matters which we ultimately choose. It could be anything. It could be a whole other platform that we don't know about yet. And for the initial fundraising, we can use Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because it's already uh, proven and uh, we know how it works, we know how to do it. And yeah, totally, we can use that. So I also wanted to talk about the, the roles, like if we, if we are going to kick off the incorporation process and to avoid the development stagnating I think assigning roles is very important because that way everybody has their own like um, responsibilities 
and we, we can start to build our schedules and, and actually, actually start to meet some deadlines and then push things forward. Because uh, the, the, one of the problems of flat organizations is that uh, things tend to take a little bit longer time than in a centralized organization. So to combat that, I think we should assign some clear roles while we are incorporating. Since yeah. uh, everybody here, I think, uh, is um, well, I'm not sure about Yari, but everybody here, uh, I think, are, are in the founding team, want to be in the founding team. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you, for me, your residency is still in the, uh, the, in the applying phase. Uh, I hope I'll get that done by, the, by this week and uh, then this should move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, the reason I think bring it up, I would like everybody to think um, how, could, how would they possibly uh, the best contribute to the project? What, what would everybody want to do? Because uh, the best results come from when everybody finds the perfect role for themselves. So for example, I, I imagine that my role would be somewhat uh, connected to the construction itself because I have so much experience in con construction project management. So um, something, something to that effect and, and what is your forte, so to speak, and what do you actually like to do? And then we could just discuss and, and try to fit in and, and then uh, actually we should also have a list of roles that needs to, need to be filled. So then we can have another meeting and assign those roles before we incorporate. And that should be done within the next two weeks, I think. Yeah, this is very, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm to totally in, of course. Uh, but I, I think it make, makes sense uh, to uh, sort of collect uh, from, from everybody their thoughts on, you know, their, what they would bring and where they feel most comfortable in, in contributing. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. So maybe you, we can do it on Telegram or, or then... Uh, just a simple Google Docs or something similar. Yeah, I, th I think a Google Doc is, is good because then they will all, all be in the same place. We can add, we can comment, we can, we can also have a list of things that we think that we need and things that we know we absolutely need uh, for the incorporation. And uh, yeah, like I, like I said, I think also the most important thing is what do you guys want to do? And how do you see yourself in the, in the like NX ecosystem or, or whatever? Like, contracts man management or you know negotiator I'm, I'm sure everybody has their own unique skill set so interesting to put those together yeah good points so so my experience is, is in finance and i think that's where i can contribute the most organizing and structuring up the the financial aspects so that is of course first of all the token sale um, but then also afterwards Investor relations and and um, uh, cash flow management is really important uh, and shouldn't be taken uh, lightheartedly. And just you know, as a as a quick aside, the cash flow management can be really really interesting when we have uh, almost real time payments. So if we, for example, use the Lightning Network or some other uh, form of fast transaction to receive the funds for each kilowatt uh, hour that is, uh, that is consumed by the consumer, then we could theoretically have a almost instant cash flow, which is fabulous because the, the sooner you have the cash flow, the cheaper it is and the more money you uh, have in your bank. And then managing this together with, with the future projects that will be raised, but also with issuing the, the dividends is a, a really, really interesting problem that will require a lot of attention and a lot of work. And I think that is one of, one of the really interesting parts uh, that we can manage together with, with the decentralized uh, organization structure. I think instant cash flow is the biggest um, yeah, point that we could, that we could uh, uh, improve the current system on. Yeah, good points. Um, anybody else want to chip in? Tell your thoughts? Uh, so I've been doing a lot of, um, over my career, a lot of uh, business model um, 
designs. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at it and, and uh, sort of aligning up the um, different players in the value chain and, and, and sort of making sure that the uh, value proposition um, aligns with with the uh, target market. So obviously there the most important piece um, that we need to think of is, is uh, who pays for the services, who who are we selling to, who, who are in the audience, and and uh, then we sort of um, start backing, backtracking from 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 there, and also backtrack the whole value chain and, and try to find the areas where it, uh, there's room for disruption, and and uh, take it from there. Uh, I think that's that's my forte. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I, I think that like our main clients are are probably realistically going to be like communities that are looking looking to have like self-sufficient um, or sovereignty over energy production or or they need some extra energy or they need more reliable 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 energy production and they want to get funding for the project because they can't build it on their own or they don't have the expertise to actually build it so i think that's those are like the main clients all right well that's a good starting point i think the um then um if 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 that is the sort of the core customer base, then one one just needs to basically uh, you know define how what is it that we bring, and and uh, then make make sure that it's very clearly described. It's very easy to understand, and and um, that also the uh, whole supply chain uh, kind of is, is aligned in a way where it, it fulfills the promise. Um, and it's not just, you know, vaporware. So uh, an MVP, um, uh, figuring out what an MVP would look like for the, uh, how to raise finance, um, you'd need to, and we'd need to figure out basically all the uh, key components in, in, the, in from regulatory aspects um, as, as well. Um, as there's a lot of uh, a lot of lot of lot of rumors around, and and uh, people um, that would be like like this case that I have in 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 Kenya. I mean, um, they can't get you know normal bank finance. It's too expensive, and uh, they don't have a you know credit score for, <laughs> to do that. So instead, they would like to raise the money from diaspora. So basically, Kenyans. Kenyans living in the UK, and and uh, from that perspective, um, um, giving thought to also the uh, you know the first potential projects would, would probably make a lot of sense. I'm not saying that these guys would actually be the first project, but uh, you know they they might be. Yeah, I think you're on the right track there. I th I think a place like that would benefit the most from our model. Like where where you already have a destabilized network and you don't really have many opportunities to raise above the poverty line um, and and uh, great gain your financial and independence. So I think we we can provide a lot of help there. So that it, it will make sense to me to build a bit pilot somewhere there as well. And and also there's a lot of. Um, um, um you know funds available but at least by the german government you know there's a big development fund that they have and um uh, and if we have a credible plan um they might provide capital uh, grants um to do the first projects and um that could be a parallel track to the ico and of course you know the actual uh, um sort of uh, project finance as well or it could be blended finance that if you have if we if we had a project that would have let's say a pledge by by um by a player then then you know that might be an opportunity but then again i'm not really a big believer in, in governments <laughs> and so um i'd, I'd rather ha get the money from the market
I think you're not alone there. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think neither. And and yes, I, I agree, Jerry. Uh, great points that you bring up. Uh, there are many areas that, that do not have the, the financial uh, system in place yet. And as Nico said, those are the places that, that need this technology the most. And I agree that, that we have the biggest potential in those areas. However, Jari, a question for you. So how difficult would you assess the, the um, doing business in, for example, Kenya? Uh, so are there many risks involved or, or is, it, is it doable? Uh, it's doable. I, I, you, you know, most risks in any business are counterparty risks. Um, so, so basically meaning that whomever uh, we partner with, so basically having credible partners uh, that we can trust, and that is really the key. And, and uh, kind of really making sure that uh, um, money and that is being spent is, is really frugal. Um, you don't sort of pass around, you know, free, free tokens, but you make sure that uh, um, um, there's, there's an immediate um, impact on the money spent. That's really the only way to, <clears throat> to work in these markets. And, and um, what's very, very crucial is project management um, and local presence. Uh, it's impossible, um, impossible to follow a project that is taking place, let's say, you know, in somewhere in Nigeria or, you know, Uganda or Kenya uh, from, from, uh, from, from a desk somewhere in Europe or, or uh, somewhere in India. You need to be a, you need to re really have feet on the ground. So uh, I, I think for, um, for NX, it would be important that we find um, find right partners uh, that aren't, you know, you know uh, scammers. There's a lot of scammers uh, in in these markets. But uh, once you get a um, project up, up up and running, you know things 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 work fine. And as we know, one of the bigger problems they have is is related to fiat currencies. So uh, you know, using Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, all, all that, uh, just just is the, is the Exactly the right thing to do. Yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree, uh, and especially the last point you bring up: uh, the biggest system, uh, the the biggest problem in such countries is the money system, and we've solved that. <laughs> so you know that that really uh, gives us quite a lot of boost, and it also is a great, great, great opportunity to introduce um, you know uh, the people to cryptocurrencies and to Bitcoin, which will bring them a lot of prosperity. So not just will we, will we bring, them, bring them electricity, but actually also a, a money system that really works, which is nice. I agree. Okay, how, how about you, Natty and Thomas? So uh, what are you st uh, strengths and how do you think you can specifically apply them to Annex? Okay, um, so I would say my greatest strength is that I'm a team guy <laughs> and that I'm good in consulting. So what Thomas and me basically want to do for Annex and which strength we want to bring to Annex is our know-how in the current fiat market and um, bring this to the Annex and to the cryptocurrency market and let NX benefit through this. Um, especially when it comes to all these compliance things. Um, because I think we have a good network of people who know a lot of things in how to incorporate, how to do an IPO and things like this, which can be almost copied to cryptocurrencies. Um, so we, we, we would give a helping hand over here and yeah um, we both have now I think five years of a background in economics and um, at least three years in banking and yeah, kind of sales and um, for my part um, I do like for a year or a year and a half I um, do it for yeah some kind of a hobby or 
you know, for trading issues. I analyze um, some yeah, corporates and yeah, that would be good to find a partner. Um, yeah. And yeah. like just for being open people. Yeah. Talk to the to everybody we get to know and try to find contacts and also uh, the exchanges. Maybe we can um gain some extra points um of interest or something like this um through our knowledge in the current system. Yeah, that's what we want to do for Annex. Yeah, I agree. You, you got experience in, in private and commercial clients in, in the banking sector. And I think investor relation is the area that you can excel in greatly. Um, so that is, uh, you know, being in contact with all the investors and, and uh, making sure that they're all up to date and that all questions are answered, uh, which is not an easy task, definitely not. Um, but also, you know, co combining uh, combining that with in-depth knowledge of, of the cryptocurrency markets and and uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. of course the knowledge in the traditional markets. Yeah, we are both addicted, like, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, in the cryptocurrency markets, and yeah, <clears throat> so we definitely could do this. Yeah. Yeah, what Max, Thomas, and me are basically trying to get started with at the moment is um, something like a consultant firm um, where we consult um, institutions and um, commerces um, how to use Bitcoin and how to set up a note so you can verify by yourself that each transaction actually happened and that it is really at your business that you received the payment. Um, and for this, we uh, do meetups for individuals, for private persons, where we want to spread awareness of annex of economy of um, Bitcoin. So there are that there are these people who really um, have the demand to buy things in the shops with Bitcoins, cryptocurrencies and things like this. And maybe this could be awesome also for Zoom meetings to do this worldwide. If anybody is interested, um, we could just set up a Zoom meeting um, because we have this knowledge in the meetings. And yeah. Okay, how about you? Up Abdul Karim Nasor Said, I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, could you maybe please give a brief introduction? And, and just so what you what you're doing? I think you're muted. I can see you though, kind of. Okay, uh, still muted. Yeah, hello. Uh, okay, now we no. no, yes. hear you. Um, this is my first time here doing. And uh, for me, Okay, I think your connection is really unstable. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you turn off your camera, that, that sometimes helps to, to decrease bandwidth. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Hey, man. Who is me? Uh, um, my name is Karim Nasser, and uh, you you got my name right, and uh, 
on my side, I think it's a good idea to have uh, one uh, currency. Uh, I mean, the use of bitcoins. It's actually a good idea. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, like uh, yesterday when we, we, were, we were talking, Uh, okay, he just he just texted me that he unfortunately got disconnected. Um, okay, so maybe I'll just give a, a, a brief overview of what Don is, is doing so far. Uh, so he's he's based in Kenya, um, in Mombasa. I hope I hope I pronounced that uh, city correctly. And he is he's a great entrepreneur. Uh, um, he started doing a, a um, internet. Okay, I think everybody who tries well, the bad who tries the bad to introduce the guy right. it gets disconnected. Not too many. It's the very What's important that? guy. <laughs> we get censored. Oh god! <laughs> it's that a save? <laughs> okay, next try again. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's a great entrepreneur. Um, he has done this. Uh, he has done the Internet Gaming Cafe. Uh, where, uh, to help kids uh, get off the street and and to give them you know uh, support, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, oh, he's the guy we were talking talking with in uh, yeah in Telegram. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. Yes, exactly. In, in Telegram, his name is Don Bashra. Um, so that's why I got confused as well uh, with the different name here in Zoom. Um, so so that's the one thing. Um, doing the Internet Gaming Cafe. He's also interested in agriculture and and uh, sustainable agriculture and um, biofuel and biogas, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, the, the main issue that, that, that he has and the main problem that, that needs solving is electricity. And uh, because in Kenya, the, the main net is not that sustainable and uh, not, um, how do you call that? Um, no, sustainable, yeah. Uh, he has a lot of blackouts, which is of course bad for his business, uh, you know, gaming without you know, electricity is a bit hard. <laughs> and so he's really interested in, in using a platform such as ours, Annex, to uh, finance or, or, or to, uh, yeah, to finance and to manage the uh, power plant, solar power plant. And not only for him and his business, but also for the entire community. Um, so yeah, with the conversation I had with Don so far, he's really a great guy, loving person. And I'm really glad to have him on, on, on our team. And yeah, I think we can do great things together. Yeah, it sounds good. And based on the brief conversation we had on Telegram, seems, seems like an enthusiastic guy. He, hopefully he, uh, he reads the Bitcoin white paper and gets infected with the idea further. I think he can be a great asset to us as well and a great partner. Oh yeah, we were also talking with him about this uh, kiosk kind of uh, business model that we could also bring and advocate to um, further facilitate both economy and NX Solar as well as a part of the communities, part of uh, part of like this plan of uh, letting people find employment for themselves and find value and, and pretty much take control of their own destinies. So we, we could have these uh, like um, branded ATMs, for example, running on an NX node for uh, like when we, we build these power plants, we are already going there and, and installing infrastructure. So we might as well uh, install a small shop that has like maybe vending machines, maybe a Bitcoin ATM, uh, stuff like that, a cryptocurrency ATM. And then um, people who maintain those and fill those machines will, will then get a job. And, yeah, I think that's that can be a beneficial model as well. And like oh, he or she's already doing like this. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt you. No, uh, like he's already doing this gaming business kind of thing, gaming lounge thing. So he clearly has um, 
technical knowledge and he, he knows how to run a, like an actual physical shop. So maybe he could help help there as well to, um, we could have these um, hubs and, and also later, like if we're talking about charging stations for, you know, whatever, electrical cars, phones, whatever, we could uh, further use the next network for. Uh, very interesting uh, possibilities in the future expansion. So in the past, yes. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So we in the past uh, spoke already about that we only want to do big uh, power plants, and now the idea with uh, which done comes up was to provide um, many small households with um, little power plants, I guess. Um, and so, should we consider to do this also in the future? Not only building big power plants. Um, so that we additionally uh, try to um, yeah, provide little households with um, power plants or little power plants, power plants, yeah, or PV panels. Really good point, and th this is a this is a concern that I had as well, because it is it is true that for us it is only um, prof or it is much more profitable and much more sustainable. Um, if we you know, use or if we build bigger power plants, economies of scale are always preferable. So that is at least 100 kilowatt hours per roof, which is a, a big farming house. But on the other hand, we, you know, um, it, there is no inherent issue with that. If we get the financing right, and if it, after all, if it you know, is profitable, we can do it. And if, for example, we say, okay, let's let's make 100 households um, with with those small kits that they can put on their roof, um, with maybe just uh, 500 watts, so really not that much. If we do several of those and do them at scale, it might be interesting again. But only doing really really small 100 to 500 watts uh, kits for one house. Is unfortunately not not sustainable and and at least from from the brief overview not doable. Yeah, so this is something um, we should think about when yeah when some big problem uh, some big power plants are running, so that we in the future say hey okay now we have three uh, big power plants let's uh, say now we can do the little households or yeah just so i like the idea of doing good to these people yeah. yeah i think we're going back to the solar city idea or solar town like a solar village rather so that way we could really um the whole capacity of the town would be like the plant essentially oh, okay. we could have this uh, smaller uh, thing but uh, yeah that's something we need to take in account in the feasibility study when which we have to Either way, we will have to assess each and every project that uh, how we're going to make it profitable because we're not going to do any projects that is not profitable. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, of course. Break, break even is uh, the bare minimum, and I don't think we're going to even do that because the point is to generate profits for the um, well, token holders. Yeah. However, what we can also do is to, to cast a vote on several pro or, or on projects that do not um, make any profit or maybe that do not even get any return at all kind of a charity if, if investors are, if, if investors are willing to do that you know charitable donations are you know doable in any form and uh why not uh why not here as well so Oh, that's a fantastic idea. I really like that. Like in the pipeline, it could be like a totally different color frame. So they will pop out right away, like charity project, charity project. And then when people are feel, feeling good about their lives, they're feeling good about their investments, they tend to give back, right? And then that will in turn, it not directly maybe benefit in terms of um, like direct revenue, but it will still grow the NX network. It will still grow awareness. And once a project does good, does charity, that tends to have a positive um, kind of like public publicity um, value as well that is hard to measure in actual revenue. A very interesting, very interesting point.
And again, this is not only for charity projects, but what we could also then do, as Nico said earlier, finance, for example, uh, charging stations for electronic vehicles. Same approach, um, you know, ask the community if they do want to fund it. If yes, great, let's do it. If no, okay, let's do the next project. But this is, you know, fast iteration and lean and agile um, management and movement is really important and, and we can do this quite well. And not only can we can we do this agile movement in the management of the company, but of course also in the funding of the company. So modular approaches to funding make, make a lot of things possible. And uh, just as a quick aside to, to clear things up, uh, so his real name is Abdul Karim and Don Bashra is his nickname. So Abdul Karim is his uh, is, uh, no, real name, just so you guys know. Okay, guys, are there any other pre uh, pressing matters that you would like to discuss? Not for me. Except no, that we should, uh, we, should, we should agree on the um, schedule, uh, what's going to happen next, and yeah. when, when we're going to touch base again. And I think the next, uh, next pressing matter is the incorporation, which technically I can start beginning of next week but probably will not unless, because um, I, I think uh, we need to, uh, everybody needs to have the e-residency before I can do that. Um, otherwise it will, it will be more work later to add the members. So I think we gotta wait. So what, what's going to happen next, I, I, I think is everybody should uh, clarify them to themselves uh, what are your strong suits? What do you want to do with NX? And how, how do you see where, where would you like to take, um, take the project? And what's the, like, let's say, let's think a year ahead, for example, like what's the, what's the goal then? Like what's, what's the growth target and how do, how do we get there? And then assign uh, uh, roles based on that. And I think what the other said is a good idea to open the Google doc. So I think we, we do that now. And then we start feeling whenever uh, you guys have a good idea, you have a, have some time, just keep adding to that. And um, yeah, we, we can just agree on our next meeting uh, in Telegram. We don't have to agree on, on it now, but we should get, uh, get moving with those roles. And once we have those roles, I think, I feel, uh, then um, everybody has a clear purpose in the project. And then I think things will just uh, start moving on their own. Because right now it's kind of like this, we are waiting for something, but there's not really a sense of urgency. I would like I to bring the urgency to the project. I think we need some deadlines for things. Yeah, agreed. And I, as you guys know, I, I do the product development, but I also like design. So if we need graphic design, we can do it as well. Yeah, that's sweet. We have like really a really talented graphic designer in house. Like, if you took a, take a look at the We Economy website, that looks <laughs> better than most of those like blockchain project websites for real. But that that is based on a theme, so I'm not the designer. It doesn't matter what it's but based I, on. It. <laughs> but but, but <laughs> I look at the modific yeah. modifications and the colors and the logo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think you might have to do the redo the NX web page as well. Yeah, I can do it as well. Cool. So um, I I'll open the Google Doc after this call and put down a couple of my own ideas and then share the link. And I guess we'll take it from there and let's keep talking on Telegram. Do you guys have anything else to add? I will upload the meeting later. Um, should we make it a public one or? I think we can make it public one. Like, uh, you know, it, it would be, in my opinion, it will be a little bit weird if we have like, we've been all, always say, saying that we want to be fully transparent. We want to be open source. All our meetings are public. And then we, if we suddenly start to have non-public meetings, it looks bad in my opinion because uh, especially since we're not discussing anything shady here but it does look shady 
if we have closed meetings. So I think it should be public. What do you guys think? I agree. Well, agree. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Agree, agreed with everything you said, Nico. Um, so uh, yeah, I agree. So putting the video public, uh, if anyone wants to watch it, please watch it. And uh, Don Bashro, he, he wanted to, uh, to watch it as well. So I, I think it's good uploading it. And then to what you said, uh, that we that we need to have some some more deadlines and a bit more uh, focused and and um, more structured uh, you know um, to do's that we that we finish uh, a time that is really important and and the last couple of weeks we 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 have been lacking that um, that's really true and um, also of course uh, on, on 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 my side as well and the white paper is still something that is uh, of utmost importance. Um, and writing on that uh, is, is vital. And yes, let's just uh, try to, to put as much content down as possible. And, and if you have time, chalk down as many sentences as, as you can and, and try to explain it as, as good as you can. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's good in the first try, just put something on paper and we can all go through it and, and edit it later. Uh, which is, you know, I think, the way to go. Yeah, I agree. The, the white paper is, yeah, for me personally, it's whenever I open it and the, I take a look at it, I feel overwhelmed. So I haven't been able to mm -hmm. really put in any work. So I think it's really important that we just start writing like, on, on top, off the top of our head and don't worry about the formatting, don't worry about the language. And, you know, we can always fix those later as long as we get some content in and we just delete the extra words later and then it will be you know a little bit better it will never be perfect but that's uh, you know not that not a goal to try to reach even what we want to do is explain it as as best we can as you said totally agree yeah yeah agree okay perfect okay, cool thanks guys it was a very very good and productive meeting and